my name is Jordan. Uh, this is my 2010 E150. I went with something like this um, with no windows to kind of make the interior build a little bit easier. Yeah, so I went with no windows um, to really reduce the amount of plastic that I was pulling out of the car. So it made like insulation easier, uh, drilling into the frame of the car easier and things like that. So originally I drove Volvo wagon. I wanted to transfer into a van conversion. So I found this um, E150 on Craigslist solely for the conversion and not for my daily car. However, it is turned into my daily car, but from the beginning, it was always meant to be built out for camping, and I did start building it immediately once I bought it. Conversion took me about three months. I was also working a full-time job at the time, so I was working you know, late evenings, early mornings, on the weekends, so I didn't have all the time to do it, but something like that, you kind of have to build when you have the time when possible. Pretty cheap build, simple build, which is I, want, I wanted like a budget build. Uh, probably put about $2,000 of my own money. Car did come with some things as of like interior work shelving and ladder racks on top, which I was able to sell off for money to help out with the funds for the build. So it's 2010, uh, the name is The Story on Wheels. So this unit right here, it was actually the last thing I built in the rig. Uh, before I was in, I was kind of lacking storage. And one thing I really like about my van now is the, the abundant amount of storage here. Um, so I kind of started at the area, wanted to sketch up something that was you know multi-purpose, a lot of utility, looked good, and uh, ran me not a lot of money. So I used uh, mostly common board. These are three by ones, common two by ones, and then uh, this is actually pine on top with a cheap glaze, which also runs about 20 bucks. And you can glaze the whole thing. And along with that, wanted to have a pull-out stove for anything at the beach. So this thing pulls out like this. You can either have it like this. I like to cook on it like this, kind of gives you more leeway to walk around while you're cooking um, but this is actually one of my favorite features of the van itself you know it allows for that in and outdoor experience when you're um, at a spot that you like so when i'm out, in, out on the road there's not much really planning or pre-prepping of the food i don't have a refrigerator in here so with cooking on on this stove i don't do a lot of pre-prepping i usually just kind of bring all the ingredients on the trip and we'll do um, prepping inside and outside the van i don't have a refrigerator in here but i do just carry a, a common cooler and you know, we're, we're running either, if it's a long trip, we're gonna put dry ice in there to make it last longer or just regular ice. If there happens to be a table or a picnic set up at the camp spot, sometimes we'll forego with this and we'll use it more as like a cutting board and take the stove out. And that way it now serves a different purpose. So looking at the table that holds the stove, all it is is just common plywood, two pieces that run right here, one solid piece here. Um, and just, I actually super glued these pieces because um, this wood was a little bit, more fragile and would split with any any kind of screws that were going in, even thin ones. And then I just got your typical, you know, kitchen drawer or dresser sliders, and that that helps, you know, bring it in and out like this. Yeah. So before I built any of this, I actually didn't own a single power tool. So this is my first go at any sort of labor or woodworking, which I think says a lot that pretty much anyone can do this. You really just get over, gotta get over the hump of like coming to the census that yes, this is something that you can possibly do. There was a lot of trial and error, frustration, but patience is definitely a huge lesson out of this. Yeah, so I kind of refer to this cabinet right here as like your under the sink cabinet, things you'd find in your, in your household. I do keep the utensils right here just for easy access. So we got forks, spoons, anything like that. Got some like pocket knives down here. Um, but for the things for under the sink, we got like propane, I have another mini stove set up in there in case we're um, just out and about like hiking and you know one that just pops on top. Extra paper towels and trash bags. Like I said, pretty much anything you find under your sink. So coming inside the van, we just talked about this area over here which is the stove and under the sink area. We got these two main cabinets. This is where I'm gonna keep most of my pots, pans, cups, plates. We have coffee down here, uh, cleaning supplies. And then any kind of dry food on the trip is gonna go in there, things that aren't going into um, the cooler, such as like trail mix, uh, protein bars, things like that. And then coming over on this one here. This one is just gonna be mostly for um, extra blankets and such, soft storage. You can see we got, you know, we keep Mexican blankets, we got tapestries in here. Um, anything, this one doesn't have any shelving in it, so it's more of like a, a stuff station. So anything soft um, that can fit in that spot is what's going to be going in there. So dishes, um, it depends where I'm staying. I have a, a refillable five gallon water jug that I bring um, if we need to wash out the van. A lot of camping spots do have wash stations, which is really, really convenient. 
Um, that's gonna be our main spot we're gonna be washing. But nothing is gonna be washed in the van as there's no pumping water or self-pumping faucets in here. Yeah, I found that it's actually kind of nice for me to not have to wash inside the van. It keeps a lot of the cleanliness, you know, above average rather than having, you know, dirty dishes or remnants of food inside the van. You know, and that comes with different smells and old food and possible ants, things like that. So I prefer washing everything outside the van. So I don't think there's gonna be a time where I add in any uh, sink or running water. So with the design here for the cabinet, there was a couple other vans that I was looking into. However, what I found when building my own van, you really gotta create it for your space as you know the dimensions and where the doors are and the front seats, that's all gonna be different. So you gotta find out what works for you. Um, I really like this. Um, if there's something I want to change, I would um, possibly reopen the center right here to have this walk through for any kind of uh, camping where you don't want to you walk out of your car late at night. And to compensate for that lost space in the middle, I probably would just actually extend this piece all the way to here, giving me more cabin space over there. But I wouldn't do anything to this area because I find that we use this pullout stove quite a bit. So these curtains up here, um, like I said, this was a budget build, simple build. I went with, this is just picture frame wire from your typical Home Depot or Lowe's. Really cheap, probably $3 for that whole thing, which is nice because it's easy to replace and it doesn't hurt your wall if it does break because it is a little bit lighter. However, I've had this in here for a year and I've never seen it you know, fall down on me. And then these are just your uh, regular clips just from your general store. And then for the fabric, I just went to a fabric store and got, I think I got about six yards for the front and then just double folded it. That way, when you do happen to close it, you can't really see through it or anything like that. No one's gonna be able to see through them and you, you still got a lot of that privacy and it's got a clean look. So with my ceilings and walls, I just went with typical paneling. And these are eight foot by four foot panels. They run 25 bucks a pop. I used five total and had extra left over. So that's a, an easy 125 bucks to get the whole van done. Um, I went with this route because of the price. It was simply an easy choice for me. They do come unstained. So you do want to pick a color that is going to match your build, complement your colors, seats and, and curtains and cabinetry if you have that. Insulation wise, underneath it, I do have denim insulation. Another reason why I chose that, it was easy. You didn't need gloves for any kind of fiberglass within the insulation itself and also ran at pretty cheap price. So I did my whole van with one roll of the denim insulation, which ran about 40 to 50 bucks, so super cheap option. However, I don't think it's the best way to insulate if you're really looking for a tight insulation going into colder temperatures. Here in California, we don't deal with too many cold temperatures. Um, I have taken this out to Alabama Hills before and it was about 21 low at night. Still pretty cold inside the van, but uh, definitely bearable with uh, a couple bodies and blankets in here. So I do like the denim insulation, however, I don't know if it's the, the best insulation to go with if you're looking for cold temperatures. If you are in a cold temperature area, there's definitely better options out there, but here in California, um, I'm not dealing with anything much lower than you know, below freezing, I guess. So it's usually above 32, and that's, that's pretty bearable with the denim. So just coming up here, I mean, I like to, to try to give it a little bit of character when I'm out on the road. I have this cutting board here, which is really nice. Um, it has these little slide out panels, helps with you know, pre-prepping or cleaning up, keeps the van nice and clean. Um, this is actually a griddle, helps with breakfast, just slides right on top of the stove and you can cook all your eggs or bacon and things like that. Um, and these are just some personal items that remind me things from home. So this is the back of the van. Um, in the back of the van, it's gonna start off with the table set up here, a simple plywood top uh, with your typical RV legs and bases. So these bases here in the legs um, actually are from Amazon. These were three bucks a pop. I have four of them, including the, the two that are under the table. And then these legs are like 10, 12 bucks. Pretty sturdy, done the job. These are also drilled straight into the frame. There's no wood under here. You can see if you lift up the carpet here, it's straight under. So those just go right into the middle. Seems pretty good to me. It's held up. I've had quite a few people for dinner in here. I uh, never seem to have any issues. So I did go with the uh, carpet option. Uh, for my van. A lot of people like to go with the laminate or hardwood floor for, you know, cleaning purposes. However, I really want to embody a, a warm home feeling rather than, you know, a work van kind of feel. Um, and I think that really ties in well with this kind of carpet. It is a little bit tougher to clean, uh, but anything like a shop vac or normal vacuum, you know, you can, you can get the, the dirt and sand out pretty easily. So a little different than the front of the van, um, that was pine wood. I wanted a little more sturdy for a countertop. Back here is actually, uh, you know, just your typical plywood, a little bit cheaper. I did go this route because eventually I want to build like a, a pretty legit dining table in here. So this is, this is kind of a temporary thing. 
but to get these like rounded and everything cut uh, I did just go with a, a typical jig, jigsaw for the corners and then your circular saw for the top down the edges and then just like the countertop up there this is glazed over just for um, protection of drinks and any kind of food on the table and then uh, you know coming over to the seats um, you can see these cushions here I actually went with your just your average full-size mattress off Amazon a lot of people go with upholstery foam however I found it to be a little more expensive to get the amount I needed so what I did is I bought a three inch mattress off Amazon and just cut it to the exact sizes I needed. And then for the covers, I went to another fabric store and just got, um, it's called Duck Canvas, pretty affordable um, canvas you can buy. And I just wrapped them and they're actually just safety pin for now. So just below the seats, um, like I said earlier was I really like storage, especially when you can get the van clean looking and it looks like there's not a lot of stuff in here, but really there's, you know, enough stuff for, you know, a two week trip or however long you're going. Um, so under here, there are uh, more storage units. If you just pull these open here, um, they are on both sides. This side I usually use for bags, for like clothing and things like that. Anything kind of soft. And then if you co come over on this side, we got the same thing. It's another um, same size box. And anything in here is gonna usually be more towards your like firewood, things that you're gonna be using outside, maybe a little bit dirtier that you don't wanna put next to the blankets and uh, clothes. So um, another cool thing about this table, um, it does turn into a bed. When I was thinking about my build, I really wanted to uh, think about the space I had and I didn't wanna build a, a permanent bed because that was gonna take up a, you know, a good portion of the van, more than half of the van is, is taken up by this um, unit right here. So these legs actually pop down and it's gonna turn into a full size bed um, and I do sleep this way. You know, I do have sleep a little diagonal, but then again, you really need every inch in the van. So if I was sleeping long ways, you know, that's another six inches I'd lose on those cabinets. And I think, you know, that's pretty important. And a small van like this. So these things pop out here. I usually, uh, once they're off, I will put them in these units down there. So this table is actually just gonna slide on these uh, two pieces of wood here, making it flat. And then you do see this empty space here. Um, so we do have another piece of wood in here, which is gonna make up for that space. So the reason why there is that space is I made the table a little bit shorter on the end so it's easier to slide in and that way you don't have corners poking people, things like that. And then to make the bed, it's as easy as taking these backrests down, which are gonna slide in here. You take the other one in here, and then you got your full size bed. Dude, this is almost just more comfortable than my normal bed. <laughs> so it works out well. I think the only thing I would ever change is just more legit seat covers. Like I said, these are just safety pinned. There are some cheap options out there, but I really haven't found the need to do that. These are holding up pretty well. And for me, if I don't need to spend the money, I probably won't do it. <laughs> So yeah, I love it. I mean, it works well. And then, you know, for breakfast, pop it up and you have your table again. Moving to the roof of the van, just have your typical uh, crossbars. I went with those and installed them myself because um, they can double as surf racks um, for any kind of beach trips or actually um, holding this cargo box. I usually don't drive with this every day as this is my everyday car and this is kind of annoying with the height clearance if you're driving into parking garages and things like that. Uh, but for any big trip, I love it up there. More storage, like I'm saying. You know, anything soft really fits well in there. Any extra blankets if you're going somewhere cold. Um, but even I've put, you know, firewood. I've put extra camping chairs up there. Anything that you want to really just grab and go a lot of the times is good up there too. Also on the roof, I do have this uh, shower over here. It is a six foot long uh, black PVC pipe. Uh, so that's, it's really nice for a shower because it just heats up in the sun due to the color. Um, really uh, simple and cheap build again. This thing ran me about $125. Holds about four gallons of water. Depending on the length of the shower, you know, that's gonna change how many showers you get out of it. Uh, it, is, it is refillable right here. So really easy to refill, uh, whether that's with the hose or just gallons. And then coming down over here, um, this is where your hose is gonna connect. So coming over to the front um, of the shower, we have the spigot here. It's on a quick release, just with your typical garden hose. So you just pop it on there. And you can either use a shower by gravity, just by having the water flow out, or actually, if you come back on this end, I did install a Schrader valve, which is your typical bike valve. I carry a, a handheld bike pump with me. Some people do uh, mini compressors, but I find um, 
the bike the handheld bike pump works pretty well sure. yeah so if you if you want something a little more i guess like your home shower with some pressure you can pump it up but actually i tend to just use it just by gravity if this thing's full of water it's gonna it's gonna push out anyway just for your, from your basic physics these are just uh like u clamps and then these screw on so it's really easy to also remove uh which i like just like the cargo box again for clearance issues uh because this this with the racks is about 96 inches, which is kind of getting close to a lot of, you know, clearance things within parking garages or uh, anything like that. So I tend, after a trip, I'll tend to take them off and drive around without anything like that on the roof. So originally when I built the van, I thought I was going to want solar. I haven't really gone on a trip where I would need it. When I do do these weekend trips, I'm trying to get off the grid and, you know, not bring any electronics like that. So I'm not needing to charge anything like a laptop or, or run anything pretty serious. I do have a 120 volt converter in the van, so I do have plugs if I need to, which I do like to only use with the car on because I suck the battery pretty well. But I don't think I have any plans of putting any solar within this build. So along with building my van, I am a photographer and writer. I do a lot of creative work uh, personally on the side. I'm also a self-published author. I wrote a book um, about a solo trip I did to Europe, backpacking trip. Um, a link to the purchase that book, um, which is available on Amazon, will be in the description, along with um, my van Instagram, the story on wheels, and then my photography portfolio, which is Jordan Tarver, um, will also be in the description.